What's going on, quitters? Welcome to another episode of Don't Quit Your Day Job. You know me. I am your host, comedian Maxim Allen. Today is January 7th, 2023. Whoa. First episode recorded of the new year. Um, hope you all had a great holiday season. I hope you guys made some resolutions. I hope you broke resolutions. I hope you reflected on your last year and you're proud of it. Uh, <laughs> but guys, we got a very special guest for you today. Today, I am joined by a very funny comedian, fresh back from the vet. No fleas, no claws. It's great. <laughs> Give it up right now for Molly Zalman. Hey, <laughs> hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. Oh what kind God. of what kind of pet you got? Because I know you I have a little dog. She's this little Havanese um small dog, little rat. Um <laughs> her name is Oppa. Uh -huh. Um she's about a year and a half old. What, um, what kind of dog are you sort of Havanese? She's like a Havanese, but huh. it, a lot of people say, Oh, is that a Shih Tzu? Okay. Um kind of similar vibe. Similar totally similar vibe. Yeah. You know what what I've recently realized I really like um Oh my god! I can't believe I'm blanking on the name. Pekingese. Not oh, Pekingese. They're so funny looking. Yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like someone designed a dog like specifically specifically to look fucked. Yeah. Um, but they're so cute. They're it's so like cute. it's like a Shih Tzu in a panini press. Yeah. Like it's. <laughs> yeah. One hundred percent. So Molly, uh, how long have you been doing stand up comedy? I've been doing stand up for about three years. I'd three say. Three years. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So when when you were young. What, did you do you come from like a family that listens to stand up or watches stand up or what was your first kind of comedy exposure? When I think yeah, no, for sure. I think the first one um, that I ever had was probably um, when my dad showed me Austin Powers when I was four. Oh really? When you were four? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we would just watch it all the time. My yeah, dad yeah. was a huge super fan, mm. so uh, we'd watch Animal House or. You know, SNL, uh, yeah, old, yeah. old tapings or um, just whatever he could get his hands on that he wanted to show me. Uh, and I was happy to receive it. So um, you were like you were like bred to be a comic. <laughs> you were like from birth <laughs> trained. <laughs> I don't know about that, but he, he was really like he was such a fan about it. And it, it got me like so excited to mm. um, share that with him. Um, right. And it's such a, a fun thing to be excited about. Yeah. And, like get into. So it's really cool. Yeah. So, so you, but you were watching a lot of like comedy stuff, like improv and like comedy movies at that time. Not, not so much improv, but just, um, just Sketch. basically like learning, like watching movies, seeing how it's done. Mm. It was mostly like, revolved around who my dad thought was funny. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. sometimes there would be like a random like Jeff Dunham thing in there. Yeah. Um or whatever. Classic. But classic Jeff. <laughs> but um no, like it was it was a ton of just like Chris Farley, um, mm. who I fell in love with. I think that was like my first like real love. Yeah, yeah. Um was there any, anyone that you didn't like that your dad really liked? Jeff Dunham. Jeff Dunham. Um yeah. I wonder Oh, there's, uh, 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 um, I think like, <laughs> I think over time my dad's taste got really like progressively more cheesier. So it was yeah, really yeah. like before he passed, he was really, really into Sebastian Maniscalco. Okay. Have Maniscalco. you heard of him? Yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, mm -hmm. My parents love him. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. if you're like 55, <laughs> Sebastian Maniscalco <laughs> is the coolest man on the planet. <laughs> he's the best. And he has this kind of vibe to him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's no, I for mean, sure. He's. One thing I really admire about him is just like how absolutely like how tight his like the performance aspect of the jokes are. You yeah, know? for sure. I don't, I would never remember. I won't remember a single one of his jokes, but I you all you can just imagine the delivery of any joke in your head. No, right? of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like he has that voice. That you you can probably take any one of your jokes at any given moment and just redo it as Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah. And <laughs> it's so clear. Yeah, it's like a theme for sure. So when you're growing up, when did you um did well, do you remember like uh did you ever explore comedy yourself or was it something that you were just always doing with your dad? Yeah, no, I I, I mean it started with him like we'd go to movies all the time and when I was little, my parents said like, oh, you know, maybe you should do stand up because yeah, yeah, I would yeah. just like talk. Yeah, of course. Making sure the mic is at a no, of course. Place for you no, I'm not sure at all. <laughs> not at all. This is great. Um, can you hear me? OK. Or I guess we won't know. We won't know. But we, I'm assuming it's all right. <laughs> It'll be great. Um, <laughs> but they, when I was little, my parents were like, oh, like, what if you try like stand up one time? Just like 
try it out. And I was like, no, like, I don't know. Like, what would I even say? Um, and I was, uh, when I was growing up, I, I really liked attention and mm -hmm. I really liked being, um, just like silly and weird and, yeah, um, yeah. So annoying, of course, at times, but um, <laughs> I think growing up, it was just kind of like developing um, who I was and like mm -hmm. my personality based off of like what I thought was funny, which was usually just like really still, silly, stupid stuff. Right. Are you were, are, were you a theater kid? Would you have any other performance? Or was it all just like kind of comedy stuff? No, I, I did um, like mandatory plays we had to do in middle school. Mm. And then in high school, I liked doing um, the musicals as well. But yeah. I was not a theater kid in a sense let's where it was like... Let's make that right now. <laughs> let's make that really clear right now. I am not a theater kid. <laughs> but um, I, I would always be put in ensemble okay because i can't sing or dance okay um but i was a very very good knife in beauty and the beast whoa nice. i know my my sophomore year so my sophomore year. i'm not into theater is ensemble just all the background characters yeah, that it's are like, just kind of yes literally okay. do i literally did that the whole time yeah i'm not even kidding <laughs> i literally wave my hands in the air yeah Ooh, as a knife, knife. Yeah. literally very door the explorer core you know? <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> okay so that's cool so uh do you remember the first comedy thing that you like either comedian or show or something that you found yourself out of your parent that's outside of your parents taste or have it has your has your tastes always kind of lined up no definitely I think um like when my parents wanted to go to bed earlier we didn't watch SNL as much anymore so I just kind of kept up with it mm. and then um just fine I just based off of um the people there like um Andy Samberg like mm -hmm. you know Lonely Island yeah. figuring out what that was and I mean that was huge and in middle school yeah uh so you can really get away from it but then there was nathan fielder and then you discover an, a whole ocean of different um yeah. different comedy and different people and um there was amy schumer um i watched her sketch show a lot which was great her sketch show actually ruled no it was it was solid i really remember solid. season one and two i was like all these sketches are absolute bangers yeah like <laughs> no it was great it was great and um my uh, siblings also have great taste, so they show me the the weigh-ins and mm -hmm. um, just what was going on at the time. I I didn't really delve into it as much as I probably should have, mm -hmm. um, but I started studying a lot of um, stand up, just watching it for fun on my own, like right, watching right. old Carlin tapes or. Um, Richard Pryor trying to figure out like is this like high school college for yeah, you yeah yeah okay. I was I was I was really into like I, all I wanted to be um in high school was on SNL mm. I don't know if you had that personality no I had that I, personality but I was I uh I never watched SNL yeah I actually found mad TV like nice. accidentally so mad TV Classic. was also I like didn't have cable so I didn't have access to comedy central mm -hmm. but mad TV was just like midnight on saturday i'm watching it on fox and yeah that was the one then when people showed me snl later i was like what is this fucking soft yeah. bullshit you know <laughs> no for sure <laughs> <We're>... <laughs> no absolutely absolutely so but yeah so you were like you were like i want to be on snl yeah no i would i would wake up and have stress dreams about it and it wasn't anything no way <laughs> i would wake up and i was like what am i gonna do for my audition and it wasn't as if like i was like great at like characters or anything or had like a, a path where i was like oh like this this is how i'm gonna do it i was just like no i ha i have to do it um wow so so I, I, I really went hard with it in high school, just um, like eating as much of it as I could. Um, wow. So are, are you doing any, any type of comedy performance this time? Are you no, writing not, sketches No, not in high school. Okay. I wrote my first sketch in high school. Um, and I think it was, it was so bad in a way that um, is shameful. But <laughs> you look at it and it's like, oh, somebody wrote this probably as like a make a wish. Like mm. it's so bad. What was um, it? What was it? It was like, it was like Jerry Seinfeld and a Care Bear. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and some other third thing. They were walking through the woods and they got lost. Mm -hmm. I was so proud of it. It was so bad. It had no structure. There was no ending. Um, the dialogue was awful. I don't even. I 
<laughs> I don't even think I could dig it up, but I, I like. You definitely can, and you're just like, I will never, I <laughs> no, will never no, dig it's, it up. <laughs> it's locked in a closet far away. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't do much until I hit college. Okay, and that's when I really jumped right in. I so. love, I love the stress dream thing because it's so wild. Like, I felt, I remember, I was kind of just like, you know, like I'm, I'm a huge nerd. I'm an engineer. I always felt like man, I'm going to be like 18 and I won't have done any amazing thing. Like you look at all these scientists from history and stuff who discovered stuff before like they're 16 and just governing planets. No, and shit. literally. And I'm like, oh, what am I? I'm just a worm. <laughs> <laughs> but like I having stress worm. dreams about SNL is so funny and like starting like so early and being like, I got to be on SNL. Like that's like astronaut mindset. No, it, you know? it just, no, it was, it was like so ridiculous and like unprecedented. And I, I put it like all on mm -hmm. myself for yeah. no reason. Um, oh yeah. Where are you? And I grew out of it. <laughs> where are you from? Like what, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Connecticut. Okay. Mm -hmm. Word. Okay. Mm -hmm. That I feel like, uh, I feel like for people on the East coast comedy as like a career or like a thing you can do seems like a more tangible. Totally. Option. Yeah. No, yeah. like, um, it would be like one time my dad, my mom and I, we went to New York and we didn't see an SNL taping, mm -hmm. but we saw the, like the museum kind of thing that's yeah. at 30 rock. Uh, and that was like a wild experience. And at that point, like it seemed so far away, like it yeah. seemed so intangible, yeah. even though I was so close, like, like a few hours away in Connecticut. Um, it just seemed like this is like a, a land of gods, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Whoa. But so it's crazy to like be in, in the same yeah. city where it happens. It's, I remember when uh, Vanessa Jackson got, yes. got on. I was like, you mean someone that just like, hung it we, we're like we're friends she goes she would go to my open mic and, no, and literally. she's just on snl now like you can just do that and she's a banger too and it's she's just amazing. it's so cool it's so cool i mean the um the opportunities the opportunities are endless here so uh college yeah. where'd you go to college i went to emerson college in boston mm, okay mm -hmm. nice mm -hmm. i don't know anything about it other than a couple other people i know went there it's a it's a it's a liberal arts school mm -hmm. classic very original uh <laughs> extremely gay school nice. um so and i I like I'd come out when I was 16, but I didn't know any, you know, LGBT history or I didn't know myself or, or right, right, right. anything like that. So going into that environment was was so cool because it was so open and so um, like so gay, like in different. You could be you could be any type of gay that you wanted. And that was great. Um, Whoa. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, yeah. And I got to I got to learn a lot. And um, I, the, I don't think it, Emerson is for everyone, but okay. it was. um it was, I think, what I needed at the time. Mm. And it allowed me to, like, fail a lot and, like, be creative and, yeah. and try things out and, okay. and see what stuck. So what did, what did you uh, go to college for? What did you, what did you study? <sighs> I studied comedy. I have a BFA in comedic arts. No fucking way. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. Can you imagine? That's crazy. <laughs> you could just do that. You could just do that. <laughs> you could you could literally just do it. That's um, so cool, and I'm so incredibly jealous. No, it it keeps me up at night. It does keep me up at night. Um, I, I had, um, yeah, it was just starting at the time, and uh, I was a VMA or a visual arts major um, in TV. But mm -hmm. like the thing about Emerson was that is that a lot of people go there and they already know what they want right they're like i'm gonna be an audio engineer for uh, mm. a live studio audience or i'm gonna be um lighting design specifically for qvc or something yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. people just knew like around me and i never ever knew like what i really wanted wow how, um, how did you deal with that because I, I i came into college as someone who knew yeah, yeah like yeah. i i was like i got out of high school i was like I am going to become an electrical engineer. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm curious about. Yes. This is what I want to do. I want to go to college for this. And it, I never had to change, but I had lots of friends who would switch majors who were unsure. So yeah. like, how did you kind of figure yourself out? In that yeah, situation? no, for sure. I, I had a teacher one time tell me that on average, um, like a person in the U.S. will change their 
entire career seven times in their lifetime. Whoa. Which is insane. That's a lot. <laughs> that's because it's a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's an average. But uh, I don't know. I was stressed a lot of the time. Like I didn't, I knew I wanted to go into entertainment, but I didn't yeah. know specifically what I wanted to do. And I didn't know what I was good at. Mm -hmm. um, and I think fear held me back a lot of the time. Because right. I was like, oh, you know, I'm probably not good at it anyway. Like maybe I shouldn't even try. And mm. that got much easier um like as time went on to be like no that's so stupid do yeah. it anyway <laughs> yeah um creep you know yeah uh but yeah I, I didn't know so I just I kind of just did um whatever I could so I did audio for a tv show for a while and mm -hmm. and learned like a soundboard and I wrote and I tried to write and stuff like that even though I, I hate writing really I hate it but I do it okay <laughs> I do it what do you hate about writing it's do, awful. Do you just hate like, do you hate like sitting down with pen and paper and like actually hand like writing like the, the physical process of doing it? Yeah. Or do you hate like just having thing having to like organize thoughts or like what, what, what is it about that you don't like? Well, for some people, I think writing is like easy and it like comes naturally to me. That's not the case. Mm. So it's like. It's like I think it's a beautiful process to like be yeah. able to write something and like I love that process and I do it. But in the middle of it, like nothing is working. None of it is good. Like, mm. like there's like a plot hole here, whatever. Yeah. Um, oh, it's hard. Okay. It's hard to craft something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I've always found that I can't do uh, like I'm not good at narrative structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I remember I used to. In high school, I ran a Dungeons and Dragons game for like two years, right? Wow. And because I knew the rules, I was the game master, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I'm more someone who knows mechanical rules yeah. and who can create a cool vibe yeah. and like have some fun elements. Story? No way. No way. No way. You want a conflict and a resolution and like a wise old man? I can't. Not I on can't me. do it. Not on me. No, I think like I think like I'll be writing for like um like I'll set a block for like an hour or so mm -hmm. and then I'll be like okay like I wrote um and like maybe in the middle I'm like oh okay yeah for sure and then at the end like maybe like at the end of the day or the next day I read it over I'm like are you nuts you know what I mean <laughs> yeah um so that process so it's like the frustrating process of it yeah um yeah. but That's it's fair. yeah do you do you, when you uh is that just specifically for like tv type writing or comedy writing or just all of it I think like tv type writing okay. and then I think sketches are fun like to write as an exercise mm. um I'm trying this thing where I write a sketch a day whoa nice um, for the whole year hell yeah um how many days is it seven days or is it longer? It's seven. <laughs> seven. It's seven. Okay. And then I have to, um, and then if I like miss a day, I have to make it up on another mm. day. Ooh, I like that. For fun. Because I do, I'm, I'm getting into the daily stuff mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it for a couple months. So I write comedy every day, Duolingo every day. I try to draw a picture every day. And, but that one's like less priority if it doesn't happen. It's yes. fine. Uh -huh. And then uh, I if, love that. if I also have time, if I'm fr in front of my computer, I'll do like daily math problems as well. Just yeah, that's like, awesome. To like, you know. Yeah, work your brain, like yeah. uh, get into it. And I think having a routine is so important for me to like stay on top of stuff I want to keep track yes. of. And um, like if I have a goal in mind or, or something. Um, so co the consistency of it is great. Mm -hmm. can, and, you know, you get to write even if it's yeah. not awesome or it doesn't make sense. Like you're putting, you know, your hands yeah. to the keys and, and it's putting in that hour. Like writing stuff that's just like whatever. It's like kind of liberating after a while because yeah. like. If you start, you're like day one and you write something, it's like not that good. You're like, oh, I gotta write something good. Yeah. But like when you're in day like 50 and yeah. something's not that great, you're like, eh, whatever. Yep. Come up with something better later. No, 100%. Yeah. And I think the more, no, that's such a good point. The more you do it, like mm -hmm. the more, and I think that it works for stand up too, is yes. the more you do it, um, like say I bomb, um, but I only do it like once or twice a week, like um, it's, that's gonna hurt me yes to my core yeah but if i'm doing if i'm if i'm going up a lot a week if i'm going to mics and i and i do it consistently like i bomb and i'm like all right on to the next yep. you know um i remember like having like tears of that feeling when I, you first start stand up you bomb at an open mic and at first you're like oh it's yeah. so hard and mm -hmm. then you do so many open mics and you're like whatever i can bomb an open mic then you start getting booked and then you bomb your first show and you're Boom. like I'm gonna kill myself. Yep, literally. <laughs> and no. then you do enough shows, and you bomb a show, and you're like, "Oh man, that sucks, but it's fine." Which for the next one? And now yeah. I'm going through the thing where uh, if I bomb at a roast battle, uh -huh. it's like even worse yeah. because. <laughs> 
because I know I'm not going to do another roast for like two or three months yeah. sometimes. So yep. I'm like, I, I want to redeem myself. Right. No, it's been so long. <laughs> I've, I've never done a roast. Oh my gosh. They're, I love them. Some people, it's for me, it's all in good fun, but yeah. I'm realizing I can't, I'm, sometimes I'm not mean enough. Yeah. Because that, because I like to keep it light and silly and such like, a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, but I love roast battles. It's just fun. It's uh, I had Dan Yang was on the podcast a while back. Oh, that's he said, awesome. He said uh, he doesn't like roast because a roast is like it's like comedy, but with homework. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> you have an assignment. Yeah. You're like, all right, time to write like 10 jokes about this person yeah. and then talk to everyone I know and figure out which ones are OK and not, you know. But I think that also is like. It's such a good exercise too, just to have like it's a topic and be like, see, oh, see what I can craft out of this. Yeah. And that's, it's also fun to have really directed material. Yeah. Whereas like when we write material about our lives and stuff or just whatever, it's kind of like all these ambiguous things that you pick from and like, oh, I'll, I'll like cobble these together with a roast. You're like, this person's face is funny. No, for sure. <laughs> this person has weird, bad hair. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's specific. Yeah. Rory Scovel has this, um, He's a comedian. He has this special. Mm -hmm. Of course, I forget what it's called, but he basically goes up um, several different times and completely improvises an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things like he said in in the doc it, or it's kind of like a documentary, actually, in this documentary that he made for it was you can take a topic and just attack every angle you can think of. Yeah. And like exercise doing that until mm. you've exhausted. Sorry, it's okay. you've exhausted like all possible mm. roots, which I think is really interesting, but hard. Interesting. That'd be like, I'm imagining like imp 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 like improvising. Yeah. And doing that like as a writing exercise, I'm like, yeah, that's great. Like write down the paper, draw a little bah, bah, thing, bah, 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 like yeah. write a bunch of stuff. But like in the moment, I feel like it's it would be so hard to just get all those little pieces. Oh my god, no, like, it's a muscle. Like you have to like it's like I think it's like crowd work or or roasting or anything. Yeah. It's it's different muscles of the body of stand up that yeah. we could experience. I feel like when when I riff, I'm like I'm riffing about this thing and then I connect it like, oh, this next thing is funny. This next thing it's like it's like it's further from the original topic. Yeah. And if I get a call back at the end, I'm like Ah, it paid off. No, a hundred percent. It's magic when that happens. It's, it's the best. It's the best. It's like, oh my god, I can actually get a laugh on this thing that I thought was gonna just crash and burn. No, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so you go to com, you go to comedy college, uh, <laughs> clown school, clown school. You yep. go to clown school. Yeah. Uh, you when do you start performing some type of comedy at that point? Uh, so what, I, what is your first foray into being on stage? So I like I got to school and all of a sudden like I'm around all these like really cool hot talented motherfuckers yeah am i allowed to swear yeah you can swear all you want motherfuckers um <laughs> and i was like i was blown away and so i figured out i wanted to be in a comedy troupe so bad because i read the books i was like mm. i gotta do a comedy troupe you know i read yeah. tina facebook amy poehler you've book, been like Amy waiting Taylor. for this moment i've been yeah i waited for it and i signed up for all the auditions they have like a weekend where you can sign up and audition um in different like studio spaces yeah um for different troops and so i did the improv troops i did sketch i think those are like the only two yeah. so uh, so, I, so i and there are a lot of them at emerson oh really so i tried out for everyone and i didn't get into any oh. and, it, and it hurt yeah it broke me um uh or bruised or bruised um but i i was like oh man like ah oh, how do i do it and i think that was my first um taste of like perseverance yeah um and like sticking with it and i didn't get into any in the fall and then the spring came around uh and i auditioned again and i had a few really horrible auditions and then a few fine ones. Mm -hmm. And then there was a comedy troupe uh, who's at the time, at the time their name was police geese. Okay. Uh, and they held their auditions a week after the mm -hmm. regular auditions, which I thought was weird. And so I didn't get into the comedy troupe set yeah. in the first week. And then on the second week, um, I auditioned for police geese and I just went in and I was like, I'm not going to get this anyway. So yeah. I might as well just um, go in there and, you know, do something. Mm -hmm. And they gave me this sketch that I hated. Um, 
they gave me a few sketches that I, I really didn't want to read. And then the one that I ended up reading was um, a sketch about a fart in an elevator. Okay. <laughs> um, and like, I don't like laugh at poop jokes much. It's, re- it's like one of the most lame thing about me mm, um, or like yeah, farts like, no, yeah, it's <laughs> awful. No, it's awful. <laughs> But it's it's my burden to carry, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I just went in and and I did this sketch not necessarily well, but I just like I think I had like a I walked in and had a big voice and performed yeah uh, and yeah. just kind of gave it my all because mm-hmm. um, I because it was freeing because I, yeah. I knew I wasn't gonna get it. Um, and then f- for some reason they called me back and I got into the troupe. Uh, and that was my first experience of being in a community. Yeah, um, yeah. Nice. And what changed it was like we were at like a table read, like mm-hmm. preparing for our next show, writing sketches. And I had a few sketches. Um, I took a class. I wanted to get better. So I took a class outside of school. Um uh, I forget what the name is. It was this like Boston Improv or okay. Improv Boston or something yeah, like yeah. that. Um, and so I took a sketch writing class there, um, <clears throat> uh, just to try to get better, like mm-hmm. f- figure out the structure and and what it was. And um, that really helped, I think, start me to mm. like write sketches that made actual sense and so had you, a sense of structure. At this time, you're very like sketch sketch minded yes no stand up is not anything i'm thinking about improv is too scary for me to even comprehend so sketch is like my gateway drug into actually doing it okay um and like that while while we are at the table read they were like oh like let's read your sketch and i was like why you want to read mine like Mm -hmm. um now and it's like yeah like (laughs) we're in a group Um, what was it you remember it I don't actually remember it. Mm. I don't think I do. Okay. Um, <laughs> which is disappointing. But do you remember if they picked it up or not? Or yeah, no, they they put it in the show. Nice. Um, which is funny. I don't remember, but uh, I I just couldn't believe like there was an opportunity to like do that. Like, oh, yeah. I'm actually doing that. Yeah. And like they were so kind and they opened that door. Um, Sick. Yeah. So were you a police goose for all of college after that? Yes, I was. Um, yeah, I stayed in it, and then I was like secretary of like the org, and then I became president for um, for two years until I left. Whoa! Yeah, the biggest goose on the block. The biggest goose on the block, nice. and it, it kind of worked out perfectly because when I was in, when I was a sophomore, my dad passed, mm. and I like. It was so hard for me to do like anything outside of school. Like yeah. it was just like um, too emotionally exhausting. So for a while in college, like all the orgs I was doing, I kind of put to the side and just focused on <clears throat> police geese. And that was like, yeah, I think that's when I first linked like comedy and grief and like mm. how therapeutic that was. And I just kind of put my all into the troop when I was dealing with that. Oh, OK. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So you see, you mentioned you were in other orgs this time as well. Mm-hmm. Are are you just is it just sketch stuff or is it? No, improv it's or? not. It's not really comedy at all. Not comedy it at was, all. It um, was. I was like a script coordinator for a, like a show on um, EIV, which is more of like a home, not a home video, but um, like not live studio audience shows Okay, at the school. So I, I did stuff like that, like mm-hmm. dabbled around. I just kind of bounced because I didn't know what yeah. I wanted. Um, right. And I didn't know, like, I should start looking for internships. So mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, like, what orgs can I kind of, you know, go Yeah, through? yeah. Try out some new stuff. Yeah, I founded a sorority. What? Whoa. Real random. <laughs> Why would I be in one? How did that go? Um, I think I think I was just, like, looking, like, for friends. No, what happened was I was, I was in love with a girl mm-hmm. who got into a sorority, and I didn't get into it. Um, but I didn't care about being in this sorority. I just wanted to like, yeah, be around her. Uh, and then they were like, some people were like, "Oh, we're making our own." And I was like, "Oh, okay, this this way, <laughs> this, this this way, she'll see I'm in one." You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just insane. Um, but yeah, that's the equivalent of uh, my my friend in comedy is getting booked at comedy clubs. I think I will start a bar show. Yes, literally. <laughs> <laughs> For so sure. you're, you're doing sketch mm-hmm. for college. That's like kind of the thing that you're kind of focusing on. Mm-hmm. When does the idea of do you do you ever try improv during that time? Or yes, you, I did. I've taken did? I've taken um, many. I've taken all of the intro courses at like 
I've taken the intro course at UCB and Groundlings mm. and at school and yeah, other yeah. places. Uh, it's so hard for me to grasp. And I really? think part of it is I'm not like fully like vulnerable with myself or feel completely comfortable being vulnerable in that state. Interesting. Okay. So but I love doing it because it's like it helps me with that. Interesting. So are you are you good at characters then? I wouldn't say mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I'm good at characters. Okay. Maybe I could be if like I invested more time into it. Okay. So I would I would read like normally I'd read like, oh, like lack of vulnerability, easier to perform in character type. Yeah. Correlation. But so like what were you good at with improv and what was like challenging for you then? Challenging was like I just didn't know what to, I didn't know what to say. Mm. I didn't know how to move a scene forward in a way that was oh, like effective okay. and natural. Yeah. So it'd be like, um, Mary, can you please help me with the plumbing? And I'd be like, uh, like I was so concerned about saying the wrong thing mm. that it would just completely inhibit any yeah. progress I would make. It was, okay. I was just really focused on myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I think like in, improv, you can't be, you have to be so focused on, right. you know, you're a vessel in, in a machine. Mm-hmm. So. Improv is kind of an embarrassing ego death in some sort of ways. No, 100%. 100%. You st someone steps out and you're like, all right, well, no one's stepping out. I'll step out to be with them. And the scene they pitch, you're like, boy, do I hate this yep. idea. <laughs> 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 but I'm here for it. <laughs> no, that's it. the funny thing is like, I'll maybe like have an idea in my head, like an audience member will say, um, a brick. You know, I'll be like, no, that's not what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> you can pick a different one. The hardest uh, part about improv is reading minds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, I met, um, I took UCB 101 when I mm -hmm. first got to the city. I met Alex Richards there and Jack Holmesley, if you know them. They I were, don't. Okay, Jack Holmes. Have you seen Matt and Jack? They do good characters as like a duo. No, I don't think uh, I have yet. They're fantastic, but you'll... You'll bump into them at some point. I'll check them they out. They do the open mic from the 70s at Tiny Cupboard, if you've ever done that one. No, I haven't. Legendary Mike. Excellent, yeah. excellent vibe. It's like Tuesdays. They have like a they dress up like 70s TV hosts and they have these like back and forth bits and stuff. They're, I love that. They're really good. But when I when I took improv, I was like, mm. people say that improv is good for stand up. It's like a good comedy muscle thing. So I'll, I'll try it. Yeah. And I'm OK with like doing scenes. But mm -hmm. the problem is I can only play myself. Yes. There is no there is no other side of me. Yeah. I can do a funny accent, mm -hmm. but it's just me with an accent, yeah. you know? <laughs> no, for sure. I think like character building is such a useful skill. I definitely love to get more into it. Yeah, and yeah. I think like that totally like <clears throat> some stand ups say that like acting classes like have really helped them. Like, yeah either with like finding their voice or, you know, how they present on stage or, you know, what their whole vibe is. So, yeah, I've been, I've been wanting to do that sometime. So I really want to get, take a clowning class. I'm really into clown. Right now. Really? Okay. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Have you done any clown yet or just kind of watch stuff or? No, I've seen a ton of it. When I left LA in March to move here, mm -hmm. there's a theater called the Elysian, okay. um, which if you go, you have to check out. Um, and they do a lot of work in progress shows there and, you know, comedy stuff and um, just like things like you wouldn't really even think of. Mm -hmm. um, and they have they have clowning classes, but they also have a lot of clown performances. Mm. And it's like amazing to see people do what they do on stage because yeah. it's so scary. It's so vulnerable. Um, it's like the going back to the vessel thing it's like your body is like this vessel and like you're using it to like make people laugh like you have right. to strip all ego from it, yeah, yeah yeah which is so <laughs> like crazy i had uh so when i was in the ucb class mm -hmm. alex richards my good friend he took a clown class at the same time yeah. and he was like dude you would hate clown class and i was like why he's like it's so he's like it's so brutal he's like brutal because the thing is like you'll like you'll go like he was saying that people will just go out on stage and just be the silliest, dumbest, do the most embarrassing thing ever. And the yeah. instructor will be like, I don't think you're being honest with yourself. Yeah. It's just total silence. Like yeah. the hardest bomb of How your you entire <laughs> life, you know, accompanied by yeah. a comment. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it, crazy. It, I was, I went to a friend's giving and there was a bunch of people there that did a lot of clown. Mm -hmm. It's so funny. Cause there's one of them was like, so like, 
what do you guys like? What would you define clown as? It's yeah. this whole philosophical debate. And I'm just like, yeah, what is this? What is this? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. I feel like I feel like stand up comedy is mm-hmm. like Reddit. Improv is like Instagram and com- comedy is like the dark web or clown is like the dark web. Yeah. Like it's just this like other universe where everyone's like, you're like, what is that? And you're like, you don't know. You won't know until you're in it. In it you know? And then you're in it. And yeah, no, 100 <laughs> percent. So that's cool. So you're. Have you, uh, so you're going to take a clown class soon or is that just like on your mind? No, it's definitely on my mind. I definitely want to take a clown class. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so when does, uh, when does performing stand up enter your like comedy World, mind? Yeah. yeah. There was this, um, my mouth is so dry. I'm so sorry. Chug, 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 chug. Um, there was this opportunity to perform stand up at, the school with this alumni, Eddie Brill, he's a comedian and he is a working comedian. He tours around, Mm -hmm. but he also does workshop classes and I don't know why I did it. Maybe because like, I just like thought like, why not try, which Mm is awesome. I'm really happy that I did. Um, and so I, I did, I went to the workshop, um, and I went up and I did okay. Yeah. Um, and he was so sweet. Uh, and he like talked through the jokes. He would like come up on stage and be like, oh, you see how you're sitting? Or mm-hmm. do you see how you're standing? It was so technical. And like there was such an art about it. Yeah. That I was so like, as he was talking, I was like, oh, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Like it seems more tangible. Right. I feel like when you get started, stand up is such a scary thing because like you have you know, like, what's your voice? Like, what are you going to talk about? Like, how are you going to talk about it? How are you going to deliver it? What are you like up there? Um, How do you interact with people? There are so many different factors. And it's like, it feels so overwhelming, like a scary monster. Yeah, yeah. Um, But breaking it down in a way that was kind and, um, like, kind of, like, creative in that way. Like, Mm -hmm. no, like, this isn't bad. Like, here's where you can take it. That's really cool. That really opened me up. And then... I did that and I spent a weekend in New York to visit my cousin Mm -hmm. and in his apartment, I wrote my first real set to do at an open mic that was at school. Okay. It was called inside joke. Mm -hmm. That was like the, the school, there was only one mic and it was there. Um, and so I did it and I killed, I did so well, I did so well. And then every time after that, I ate, shit hell yeah hell bomb, yeah bomb, bomb. <laughs> um but there was something about it where i was like i don't i don't think in my head i was like oh i'm good at this i should keep doing it it was just like wow i really like doing this like yeah what could i what could i do with this um and then i wasn't taking it really seriously mm-hmm. and i bounced around a few mics in boston um like towards the end of the summer in 20 20- 18 Mm -hmm. and that's when i moved to la nice Mm -hmm. how long were you in la for i was in la for about three years two three years Mm -hmm. nice so did you when you went to la did you start like actually hitting stand up like seriously or yeah i did i was i went um to there was this program or there is this program called emerson la okay and it's a satellite campus okay uh, that they have so you can go and finish out your credits and do an Mm -hmm. internship and my internship was at the Groundlings. So oh, wow. I, yeah, nice. which was super, super cool. Yeah. Not helpful in any way for like, like a, like a working, like entertainment career. Yeah. I think, but, but that's I got to be there. That's for you. Yeah, yeah. No, I was using my degree. <laughs> yeah. But I, I was, I was there and it was so awesome. Like I was floored that I could even be there. It was such right, a right. huge deal for me mm-hmm. because I didn't know like someone like me just like i didn't think like i could like ever be in that space it was all just kind of a dream yeah and so existing and being an intern and seeing how like shows are run or like you know mindy sterling yeah. or just like seeing jerry trainer just seeing you know for my car like random people like yeah <laughs> that would just like walk in and out um was shocking to me i loved it i got yeah. they let me stay in the back and like watch shows for free cool um and I just learned and uh, tried to absorb like what was going on, what the process of like the groundlings mm-hmm. was. It was not something that I was interested in pursuing because it's so intense and it's so such a long process. Right. 
to be there, which isn't to say it isn't amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but I just knew that it wasn't going to be for me. So right. to be there in a space where I didn't feel a pressure to be like, oh, I have to, you know, yeah, yeah. get in on this. You just chill. I could just, you know, really take from it. And I did. Cool. Yeah. So you said inter internship. Was that like a whole year you were doing that? No, it was only it was only summer? for. Yeah, it was it was only for a semester okay um and are you are you then hitting the la open mics around this yeah, time yeah and that's and that's when i got really into it okay mm -hmm. what what the hell is going on with la open mics i feel like every <laughs> time a new york comic goes to la they yeah. come back and they're like everybody in la fucking sucks no their open mics are terrible stay here <laughs> no for sure so i think <clears throat> pre-pandemic okay um la had a lot of um spaces yeah uh like community spaces you could have a mic in a library or a bar really similar to how it is here mm -hmm. um free like maybe it was in the back of a gas station or like in there was just one time where i saw one in a moving truck whoa nice that's sick um but th they were there weren't as many as there were here but there were in spaces where um you know you didn't have to pay five dollars for five minutes which is very the culture right. out in LA so if you go now um and you hit a mic a lot of them are paid some of them yeah. are paid here like you get a drink from a bar yeah or something and support the bar which is awesome or maybe like you have a mic at a club and they require you to you run a mic at a club and they require you to pay but there it's very much like pay to play yeah and how they do it a lot of the time is they group it in like blocks of 10 so it'll be like 10 comedians an hour or like however they fill that five minutes mm -hmm. or the 60 minutes with the five increments. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's very strict in the sense that you can't leave early. You have to be there the whole time um, or you get banned. Nice. I and that's like a that. lot of them. <laughs> that's a lot of them. And in those spaces, it's like there's only like 10 people. Yeah. Right. And we know comics like no one's really thinking about your set when you're performing or, yeah. you know, like I think the culture we have here is that people pay attention. It's like, we have a community mm -hmm. and like people we love in it, which is the best. Um, <laughs> but in those spaces, it can be the best. Yeah. But in those spaces where it's very structured like that and like no one wants to be trapped in there for an hour, yeah. like you're going to bomb. It's yeah. hard to be in those spaces and do well. I will say here when I'm at a mic where there's like tons of people I know and I want to pay attention to their sets and stuff when there's someone I don't know it's kind of a relief because I'm like oh I'm gonna look at my phone for a little bit and yep. just kind of tune out no, I, 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 no for sure for sure interesting I um I I kind of like the 10 person open mic yeah it's like a like one hour of time is like great yeah to just do it and be done and it's not like too much well that's the thing that. like you can literally like do that joke comics do and it's like yeah i went to five open mic earlier like you yeah. can do that yeah you can um but it's like how productive is it right i also feel like uh one thing that i've heard a lot about la is a lot of the comedians a lot of the open micers are different types of actors or performers yeah. who are just doing comedy as like a just to try it out thing. yeah no, for sure. I think that it, a lot of actors um, or influencers will like supplement their career doing mm. stand up. I think there's a lot more of that out there yeah. than there is here. I think a, <clears throat> more people here are like really stand up heavy. Yeah. Like, oh, I just want to do stand up or oh, I want to do stand up and, mm. and write. But I do stand up. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, okay. I think that's I think that's totally a okay. vibe. Mm -hmm. I feel like. Uh, the the doing stand up to do stand up to do stand up thing is like crazy personally. <laughs> the same, the same, like like just doing stand up to just do stand up. Just doing stand up. Like I feel like there's when we when we hear like these about like, you know, like these big comedians, we hear their coming up stories, we're like, oh, I just like like breathe stand up yeah. for just ten years straight. Yeah. And I don't get it. I'm like, you don't want to do other comedy like projects, other yeah. side things. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure. No, definitely, definitely. It, so I, I understand people doing other stuff, but um, I talked about this with Danielle Valuti yesterday in her podcast. I feel like I'll, I have lots of other stuff, other side projects I like to do. Yeah. But 
comedy it's not even about having a comedy career or making money from stand-up or anything but stand-up is the thing that's like looming over me that i will always want to be better at yeah and like get good at for sure just for me if anything yeah you know? no of course of course <laughs> and that's and that's beautiful like in a way you can stand-up can mean different things to different people and and how we intake it is special yeah yeah, yeah. so la is it actually impossible to hit multiple open mics if they're far apart, is traffic really that bad? I never, I mean, I, traffic is bad everywhere, I feel like. But L.A., I never, there was never a day where I was like, oh, it's, traffic is just awful and mm. I can't handle it anymore. Um, okay. It's just traffic. Um, So I would try to hit like, um, like I think the most like, oh, op- the most open mics I were I was able to hit like there I think in a week like I did like eight or nine okay um which it's, is like still a good number it's a lot well, yeah which is still a good number um but no the driving time you know takes it yeah. rather than like if I'm doing Molly's late make on Thursdays at PK, Pete's candy store at five p.m. Uh, <laughs> and then I want to hit Waho at Fiction Bar at seven p.m. on Thursdays um I can just like hop over I yeah. can just walk it's like really twenty quick. minutes yeah. Okay. Uh, what so was the your... accessibility of it is stark. For it's sure. so much better. Dude, yeah. I can't, I do not want to ever own a car again. Like no. Living in New York, I'm like, this is the best. Well, I feel like, I feel like, like, uh, as the years go on owning a car, it'll just kind of look like, oh, <laughs> yeah. emissions. You're going to do that. You're going to do that. It's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. We need to. I'm like, I'm just like a transit nerd. I'm yeah. Like, we need trains everywhere. We well, you're buses. an engineer. Yeah. Do, you, do you work? No. No. I'm an electrical engineer. I just, but if I didn't do electrical engineering, I would have been a civil engineer, I think. I would have been all about that city planning. That's really cool. But uh, LA, you moved to LA. Yep. How long is it before you get booked on your first show? Um, It took a while. It took a really long time because. Maybe it wasn't like accessible or mm-hmm. um, I just didn't know how to do it. Like I would I wasn't confident for yeah. a while and I didn't I wouldn't call myself a comic to people because I thought it was just such a highly regarded like right. thing to be that I didn't earn it. Yeah, I didn't deserve it. I used um, to say I'm uh, I'm doing stand up. I'm not I wouldn't say I'm a comedian. Like I'm, I'm trying stand up. Yeah, for sure. Up. For sure. <laughs> um, and I, I think there's, you know, power in like being able to call yourself a comic. Yeah. And now I do, but at the time, like, I just couldn't. And I didn't know the networking aspect of it. Right. Um, and how important that was to, like, literally just meet people. Yeah. Like, after a mic, I just go home. Mm. And I think, like, there are some spaces where that was the vibe. Like, yeah, everyone goes home, like, right after. No one really talks. But I wish I had known, like, to go to more shows, like, yeah. watch more shows, like, That's something I go with understand. someone, like, hang out like Mm -hmm. you know see like who people are um like um you know like lend like a conversation to someone yeah um like meet someone new i would when i start out i was like people like yeah just go hang out at shows and i was like you mean just like brown nose until someone books me i was like no i'm not gonna do that yeah like i'll be honest i'll go to a show and i'm booked on a show (laughs) yeah for sure for sure and like i didn't even like like being on a show was a concept like I couldn't even wrap my head around because a show yeah. in my mind was huge. Any show, someone asking me to be on their show, yeah, insane. Big I feel like deal. that's still insane yeah. to like hear. Um, but it's like I I didn't know. Like I yeah. just like I didn't know, and I didn't know I had to like know. But I had friends that were like mm-hmm. starting to do that and like getting booked, and I was like, oh, like maybe they're doing something there, you know. But it wasn't so I got booked on my first show um in like twenty nineteen sometime. Mm-hmm. Twenty nineteen sometime. Um yeah. How'd it go? I don't even remember don't what even the remember? first one Whoa. was. I don't even remember <laughs> what the first one was. I think I was so just so nervous i feel like though like that first show for so many people is such a monumental like moment no it is like that it's like (laughs) people get up and just like bomb yep yep 100 100 and i did and i Mm. I mean i didn't i wasn't like looking back at the jokes i had like at that time i was like who is booking me on a show you know um (laughs) but um but no it was it once like I got booked on a show. I was like, oh, this is like 
this is more possible and a lot of yeah. it is just like meeting people and like being in a space like luck like yeah. being in a right space right time yes um which is like kind of like the a frustrating part of it but like also like such a magical part of it too yeah yeah i think uh the networking it was so like new york city pre-pandemic i really struggled with networking too but i didn't realize like now i i think for networking at just like the open mic level right I think there's a difference between open mics and like destination mics is what yeah. I call them. Like there are open mics you go to, everyone does their time and kind of fucks off. Yeah. Destination mics are mics that you know it's like, oh, people are going to this mic for a hang. And that's yeah. the one you want to go to that one. Right. And I didn't know like I didn't know um I didn't know anything. I didn't know what mics were good. I was just throwing stuff on the wall and seeing what stuck. Yeah. Um and I love that I got to do that because like I, yeah. I got to like figure it out and I'm 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 I wish like of course someone would have been like oh no this is this is what you do because of course we would all love to know oh what's the next step how yeah. do you do this um <laughs> but learning it on my own I think was was good because it um helped me build a muscle to like mm -hmm. um just keep going even though right. you have no you have no idea how to get there just yeah. keep doing it. I used to joke that like I need a therapist who's made it in comedy so they know what I'm going through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not like, did, did you start your own show out there at any point? No, or, I didn't. No? That was something that, I mean, being on a show was nuts to me. And then having my own show was something that I couldn't even conceptualize. Yeah. So no way. Um, but I, I just did like a lot of open mics. Mm -hmm. um, and I just like tried to write my stuff and and get better at it and, and see what worked. And shows were just something that wasn't on my mind really at all. Yeah. Um, I got to, uh, I, I messaged this comic, Ellery Smith. She's mm -hmm. in LA. She wrote for Robot Chicken. Um, and she's just an all around like kick ass, awesome comedian. Uh, and she got coffee with me or, um, and she was willing to get coffee with me um, when I moved to LA. And um, she was really kind and, and helpful and um, just being someone I could talk to like about it. Cause I didn't have many friends who did it either. Right. Um, so I was just, trying to figure out like oh who is doing this like mm -hmm. how are they doing it like yeah yeah so it was very like oh like i'm studying Take notes on all yeah. of it yeah yeah for sure <laughs> and that's what i did no but i did not have a show out there okay mm -hmm. and uh last la question before we get to new york what what neighborhood what neighborhood are people in in la i feel like one of the things about like la as a destination is everyone's just like it's fucking massive so where do you it's go it's huge it's so spread out yeah. um so it's like there, you can like go to a mic that's like two hours away. Yeah. Um, which is funny, but there, I lived in El Sereno, okay, California when I, I mean, L.A. when I first moved there, which is super east. Okay. It's very east. It's like not even like no one knows what El Sereno is. Okay. Um, <laughs> and so I lived really really far and didn't mm. know it until I moved to Silver Lake, which is a cool spot, which is like a hot spot. Um, if you look up. Silver Lake on Google, I think they like describe it as like a hipster town, mm. which is so embarrassing. But um, that when I moved there, I was like, oh, I'm kind of central to everything. Yeah. Um, okay. So Silver Lake is our is their Bushwick. I don't know in comparison okay. enough. I don't know enough about the bros here to like make a connection yet. Gotcha. Um, but I'm sure that's correct. You're figuring it out. Um, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, what out. neighborhood do you live in now? I live in Williamsburg. Williamsburg. Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. For sure. I had a. Actually, I think Williamsburg and Silver Lake are kind of maybe pair vibe. and pair. Or maybe. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's good. It's good to kind of contextualize that. Yeah. For, I guess. <laughs> maybe I got it super wrong. They'll let maybe. us know in the comments. They'll let us know in the comments for sure. Uh, okay. So why the move to New York? When did this kind of come around your head? Yeah. So, so like when the pandemic hit, like the biggest show, like. I got on was like a show with Joel Kim Booster. Okay. And then that was the day they shut everything down in LA. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't do, I did stand up weekly, like on Zoom with a few friends that we would like get together. I yeah. didn't do a Zoom show or a Zoom mic, but I would just like get together and like write with friends. And that's like how my, I kept doing stand up in that way, but I didn't perform for a year right. and a half. Whoa. I didn't really write for a year and a half. And that was partially because. LA wasn't super open. Right, right, right. But also I was living with my mom in Connecticut for a bit. And mm. they don't have any open mics in Killingworth, right. Connecticut. Yeah. 
If there is, let me know in the comments. <laughs> um, but I didn't, I didn't have that access. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, I think the difference is New York, like kept going. Like oh, even there, like it was even the best. The, yeah, <laughs> even though there was like the restrictions and the lockdowns, like at New York, like kind of just like kept going and then even grew. It, I feel like a ton. It ruled. In it was a way, the best. <laughs> yeah, I, I can only imagine. I'd love to hear your experience about it. Uh, basically, um, coming into <sighs> New, the New York comedy scene pre-pandemic, I was here about eight months. <clears throat> the The thing is that the comedy scene was made of people who all moved to New York and were trying to figure out a pre-existing machine in a mm -hmm. way, right? So you're all kind of just like jumbling around. Everyone's right. kind of f like figuring out their own path and whatever. When the pandemic hit, all the people who weren't diehard like evaporated Vanished, yeah so then it just you it kind of distilled it down like oh there's only like 300 comics of our level now yeah or something and like we know all of them and so we just like ended up everyone was doing like some like rooftop shows backyard shows all these like which really I love. intimate fun things especially during the summer like it was just yeah. such a blast to just do a rooftop mic like drink beers with people yep. and know it's not like Oh, we can be one. We can be any at any of a hundred mics. It's like today is the day. There are two mics today, yep. and this is where you can be. And it it kind of made it made it simple. Mm -hmm. And also, you had really experienced comics doing really like low level show air quotes low level shows, yeah. right? So you kind of get this like blending where it's like okay. There's no comedy clubs for you guys to be at. So you have to mingle with us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And do what we do. So it was, it was really cool. And especially when uh, the tiny cupboard had the rooftop. Yeah. That was like the best. Like it was just crazy being up there and just seeing like I used to joke. It's like if you had a time lapse of the tiny, tiny cupboard rooftop in like one day, you'd see like every single comedian in the city at some point. Yeah. So it was just like really fun and really chill. And like outdoor comedy was just it was chaotic. But it was fun because it was like we got to know all the comedians really mm -hmm. well. And like, honestly, hanging out in a basement mm -hmm. or hanging out on a rooftop with a view. Right. It's kind of obvious which ones were going to be more fun. No, so. for sure. For sure. No, I got a taste of New York when I came out here to um, I got a gig working for this um, Swish visual artist. Okay. Um, I was here for like two months in the mm -hmm. summer of 2021. Okay. Uh, which is two years ago now. Yeah. Horrifying. Whoa. Wow. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, and I got to like experience and that that's when I first got back into like mm. performing is nice. when I came to New York. Um, and I, I just couldn't believe um, how open it was in terms of like and the, that's when the tiny cover was like really hot with the roof. Yeah. And stuff like that. And I was just amazed. And that's what made me want to move and the the other thing is also the scene got so much more friendly yes so much oh you more think so so it wasn't as friendly before like some people it was so uh, uh there were people like yeah there's friendly aspects of it and stuff but it was so tough to get your feet on the ground mm -hmm. and feel like like if you are if you're like trying to make friends but you don't realize who's who and what's what yes those people that you're trying to like figure out they're also trying to figure out where they are. Yeah. So no one had any grounding. And so it kind of became like, well, why would I help you? Like, I don't right. know who the fuck are you? Because I don't know who the fuck I am. Like, right. But it, it it's so nice. And especially once like the vaccine came out and a whole wave of people started comedy or were coming back to comedy. Yeah. Night and day. Everyone was so just night. Like starting comedy in 2021 New York City was like the perfect time to do it yeah. for a lot of people because it's like everyone's just nice we're just grateful to be yeah. doing comedy you no know? <laughs> no that's and that's the thing like i i wish like in the heart of the pandemic when you know i was mm -hmm. trapped in my room in the winter time like and things were so scary like i would give anything to bomb you know which was so funny because it was like we literally so lee and i we mm -hmm. had a mic wobbly ladder mic which used to be a rooftop mic then i was remember a that mic mm-hmm the first winter of the pandemic, there were not nothing was open, so you couldn't go and stuff. Yep. Like there was no indoor comedy, so it's still all outdoor comedy. Mm -hmm. Still, we literally moved our mic from Fridays at seven p.m. to Saturdays at two p.m. so we could do it during the daylight yeah. in our backyard in like a foot of snow. Yeah. <laughs> People were out there just like, 
<laughs> but we're it's doing comedy. <laughs> That's so funny. I'd love to see that. That's so funny. We, wanted, we just wanted it so bad. It was like, well, we're not going to not do comedy for two months. So no, should, of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so you come to New York. You what, what mics do you do when you're visiting? During that two month period, do you remember which mics you went to? Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, there wasn't that help, very helpful eye candy list um, yeah. <laughs> out at the time. So it was me try. Like I did a, a few mics in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about Brooklyn mics, so I was like trying yeah. to see. And it was at a place called Cellar Seventy Seven. I don't know if you remember that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah, you remember it. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that's when I. That's that was my fr the first time I did stand up again. Um, was at Teller seventy seven mm. in twenty twenty one. Um, brutal. Brutal. No, it was. It's um, it's, it's funny because I've interviewed a lot of comedians in the last three months who have said Cellar seventy seven was their starting point. Yeah. Or was their first experience in New York comedy? I'm like, you just. Like, there's so much more fun things. There's so <laughs> no, much better sure. things out there, but people just go there. Yeah, you know? no, I, I mean, I had no idea. So I was, I was, um, so I went to that mic and, um, I like dabbled around. That's when I started going to more shows. Yeah. Cause I was like, oh, look at all these people. Mm -hmm. Um, and the first, um, the, when I performed, I met for the first time again, I, met maddie peck okay. and caroline cianci mm -hmm. and they were so so sweet um and they were like you know doing mics too and they were like oh yeah we have a, we have a show last drop mm -hmm. and that was like the first like stand-up show i saw okay back from uh like being out of it for a while yeah. and i was just blown away mm -hmm. and i was like oh my god look at what these people are doing that's so so cool yeah and they were like oh like Caroline was like, oh, like, check out this mic, maybe better, et cetera. And that's, I would go to Tiny Cupboard, too. I was, I'm trying to think of, of what else I did. Old Man Hustle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Old Man Hustle. I literally, I was, Pear. I was straight up, like, during, like, 2021, I was like, I will never I'm not doing Joey Bats. I'm not doing Old Man Hustle. I'm not going to Joey stand. Bats. I would go to, I went to oh Joey Bats God. twice and I missed it both times, like the sign up or something. So I just watched. I was like, I will never, ever be waiting on the sidewalk to perform at one of these mics. I can't do it. No, that's, well, that's like what I thought. I was like, yeah. I was like, I'm going to do it. And that night I was going to do it when I went to Joey Bats. I was going to do it the first time back into it and I was like late and I couldn't and I was so 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 nervous and I thought that's just like oh yeah this is like a great mic and this is how it's done here <laughs> and I was like this is it this is what I'm gonna do yep that's yeah. so funny and but also the, yeah. like one thing also you mentioned meeting two people who run a show and they were like nice to you and all this stuff yeah I think this is, this is clearly something you kind of experienced some way but coming to New York broke down the barriers uh, in like my mind of like what was possible to do as a comedian like i like running a show right yeah being on a show whoa whoa like it, when i started I remember hosting a mic felt like whoa you're whoa. a mic host yeah. like and then when i came here it was just like oh you can just start a thing you, you can, can start literally you just do it and i didn't i didn't that wasn't a vibe that yeah existed around me mm -hmm. before um like the pandemic like yeah. it just didn't and like all of a sudden there was just a boom yeah and like there are a million shows here and like um, a lot of them are awesome yeah um there's a ton of mics here a lot of them are awesome like mm -hmm. it's, there's just so much opportunity to like oh yeah I'm, I'm hitting pine box or oh i'm going to like efficiency later like yeah. whatever like it's just and they're all cool like everyone cool. has like a specific thing they do like if it's like simp fest or mm -hmm. you know like they have a, a very specific like tone with their show and how yeah. they run it and um it's just cool what you can do and that was something i never thought was possible yeah it's the best i <laughs> i remember so late 2020 I was like, at a certain point, there was more shows than there were open mics. It was like a weird thing because everyone realized at the same time, like, we, can, we can just all we can just start do it. shows. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, uh, what if I just want to go to a mic? No, yeah, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> for sure. It's so cool. And I think I'm like, I'm in the camp of everybody should have a show at some point. Like yeah. get a year into stand up and just start the show. And it's okay if it's terrible, but it's so good for your journey. No, it's it's so good for it. And I, I wish I had done it 
earlier Mm -hmm. and been like, no, it doesn't matter. Like you, it doesn't matter that you don't know what you're doing. You'll figure it out and that's okay. And it's okay to not know. And it's okay to fail really, really hard. Um, (laughs) And when I started the show that I run called fatherless behavior Mm -hmm. with Mike, Mm -hmm. my buddy and co-host, um, like we were excited we we want to know like how to put a show together and so like our journey has just been figuring out how do we make a show that we would want to go to one and that our friends would want to go to two and like just make it yeah and like that's like such a cool thing to be able to like craft a show live performance is so exciting yeah and like half the time like you know maybe you not a lot of people show up or like you have a ton of tech issues um (laughs) like it's like insane and like everything's going wrong but at the end of the day it's like you threw something together like you're figuring it out like that's cool and it's okay to not oh yeah have a banger every time yeah you know i ran a two virgins with david dobbins Mm -hmm. for a full year that was a learning experience. Yeah. Just like weekly, weekly show, poorly attended most times. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> What's kind of funny about it too is like we used to we used to start the show with both of us, both of us like hosting, mm-hmm. and then we would do single host between the comics, yeah. right? Yeah. I am such a stickler about hosting. Yeah. That I like literally can't stand most like dual host like bits. Yep. And we just did it for a whole year and just never revised it. Yeah. We were just like, <laughs> let's just keep trying it. Let's just, yeah, sometimes let's just it like works. going with yeah. no plan and keep repeating it. It's completely contrary to and all of my other thoughts yeah. about other people's shows. But for <laughs> us, it's surely it'll work. No, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> what is like, it? What do you think the biggest thing you learned from running a show like that was? <sighs> okay. So for, for us, I think there was, it was a special sauce of like poor conditions that mm. like kind of led to the, what, it, what it became. So like we started strong we could bark a lot of audience in, but yeah. we started in August when a lot of people moved to the city. Mm. Right. And then when the, uh, over the new year, it was just like a steady downturn until we had like two months straight where there was like three people in the audience were like, yeah. we have to call this. Yeah. But that show, one of the problems was to go to the show, you walk into the bar you don't see the show. You mm-hmm. have to go up the back staircase. Okay. You get to the top of the staircase. You look around. No show. You have to do a full 180 and look behind you. And be like, oh, that there's the room with the show. <laughs> so, <laughs> so one of the things I learned mm-hmm. is uh, if you want to do a bar show, you should do it in such a way that when you walk into the bar, there's show. Yeah. You know, you want people who are on the street to look into that bar and be like, oh, should we drink? Oh, they're having a comedy show, yeah. you know? It's like that's just like a small thing uh two barking mm-hmm. uh barking by yourself as a man terrible terrible barking uh as two guys much better <laughs> much better yeah. barking as uh any number of people with a woman amazing yeah okay <laughs> don't bark at uh if you're a guy don't bark at groups of men because mm-hmm. groups of men don't want to see your comedy show and they all think they're funnier than you. Yep. So you're like, hey guys, we got a free comedy show. And they're like, oh, well, fuck you. Yep. <laughs> they just say the meanest <laughs> thing that they yep. can think of. You want to bark at co-ed groups. Groups of women and co-ed groups are really good. Like groups of women are typically more like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, we can try it out. Yeah, let's yeah. have fun, whatever. Groups of guys and girls. What's kind of funny is you can tell on the faces that a lot of times the guys are like, do we? And then the girls would be like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. You know? No, for sure. And because no one, no one in a co-ed group situation wants to be the person that's like, fuck this guy. Yeah. And then just like totally bomb. Totally. You know? Totally. So I don't know. We learned a lot about barking and location. We, we had Where did a, you have it? It was at Solace Bar in the East Village. Okay. So a lot of foot traffic, which was good for barking. But like I said, the bar itself, like kind of a Macy yeah. up there. Uh-huh. The pro of the bar was they didn't give a, they were like, yeah, they were cool. We liked the bartenders. They liked us. We didn't have any type of agreement where they needed ticket sales or anything like that. Yeah. It was just like, That's you, awesome. you keep drinks, we keep whatever we get donated. Yeah. Hands off. So that was good. But uh, also there's no, one thing that we were struggling with is there was, we didn't have a gimmick. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was two virgins. We j- make like, Bible jokes and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. But like there's, as an audience member, there was not a reason to be there that made that show any more special than any other comedy show. Gotcha. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I haven't started another show yet. I'm kind of taking a break. From no, it, totally. It's a lot of work. There's so much, there's so many little aspects and like things you got to deal with. Yes, and there it's are. Like, mm-hmm. 
what did I want? I liked having a 10 minute spot yep. every week where I just go set up, do my 10 minutes, you know, try learn crowd work, which is the best thing about a bar show. Running yep. your own show, you yep. can get good at crowd work. Mm -hmm. And but all the other things like stressing about attendance, because I'm not worried about attendance for me. I'm worried about it for the other comics that I've booked. I've yes. asked no, you, of course. please come. Yes. We'd love to have mm -hmm. you. You come there. There's five people. And then we're like, no, no, no. There's five people. But these are these these five people rule. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you no, know? These, these ones are great. No, sure. They're sure. great. Like one time we just had a show where there was no, like literally there was one girl who came mm -hmm. and I don't know how she found the show. She sat right up in front. But she was the best audience member in the universe. <laughs> Paid attention to all the jokes, did all the crowd work, and was just so happy to be there. Yeah. And she had such a good time. Yeah. She came to get falafel with us after the oh, show. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> so it worked out, but enough about me. So <laughs> more yeah, comedy show. Like, what have you learned? What 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 have been the challenges for you, or what have things that ha you have changed about your show that have paid off for the better? No, for sure. I think like when we went in, we were spending so much money on it. Oh yeah, we had our first show <laughs> at Fiction Bar in Brooklyn, and they have um they had a they have a really or they did when we did our show there. They had a really tight um like 400 minimum at the bar. Yeah. And we were like, sure. Um, we didn't make it at all. So we had to, we had to pay the difference. Um, so we weren't thinking in terms of like slim simplicity. We were just thinking like, how do we make this like, um, as cool as we can yeah. without any of the bare bones on the bottom? Like, let's yeah. just like, let's just, you know, try it. And like, not direct our energy mm -hmm. where we should have and where we should have directed our energy at the beginning was like um you know finding a space that we really enjoyed that was conducive to like yeah a good setup because the energy in rooms like can be different um you know if you're in a big stadium it's gonna feel different than a you know a little yeah a little a little bar so going into it we we had n no knowledge of what to do we were just like okay like we have a venue. Uh, well, uh, okay, now we have a date. And we were just yeah. like making like little to do's. Um, but what was great is like we just had each other. So yeah. like no matter what, it was like, all right, we'll we'll get through it together. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we learned a lot about um, uh, the timing of it, um, like how to like better host like mm -hmm. with each other on stage yeah uh and just like not look at each other dumb and be like what do we say now um, yeah we came up with the rule that was um when we were both on stage the rule is if you think of something to say just talk over the other person just go for it yep. just like don't hold back don't be like oh i'm gonna wait till he's done with his bit just start into the just next do it one. just yeah. do it uh no i like that i really like that uh because it's immediate and it yeah. keeps the energy going for sure but yeah um i think just like getting people in seats and figuring out like you know marketing on instagram and yeah. and how to do all that and yeah, fuck that. get it's people the it's the worst it's so hard you get people like excited about a show yeah. and then also like figure out what is the concept of the show that we want are we just doing a show to do a show or is mm -hmm. it like a real concept that we want to nail down and like right. build off of and grow and do we have like a theme you know like could it be yeah. more than just what we're doing yeah uh, and i think investing more in like the little details and the heart of it was yeah. was so much more helpful than mm. us being like oh how do we how do we get it at this venue right you know right, like right. no like you take a step back like yeah um it'll it'll it's like it's been such a cool learning experience to be like oh like how do we grow this together yeah yeah it feels like i used to think like a comedy show is like something like, like yeah you you plan like you want a big do a, do it all right yeah now i kind of view it as like you're building like an engine like a system yes. to create a good show on a regular timing like let's get all these pieces lined up so that every time we want to have the show yeah it's just easy that they can all just fall into yes. place and have it happen you yeah know? and of course and like you don't know in, in, until or like we didn't know until we did it and then we kind of got a process forming like okay like i'll like go see like what comics are available okay cool i'm gonna reach out to a bar okay cool i'm gonna yeah see um what time we could get or um you know what equipment we would need um do we want to do anything between the comics like have yeah. a little whatever uh, and that's been so cool and mm -hmm. like rewarding to you know just little baby steps mm -hmm. yeah i uh <laughs> i'm surprised that uh you started at fiction bar and didn't meet the bar minimum because i feel like fiction fiction bar is yeah. like 
the weird Brooklyn black magic of comedy yes. shows. Yeah. Like anything that's there, tons of people are there. Tons of people are there. <laughs> tons of people are there. Um, and with our first show, like we had a ton of my friends, they came and it was like they filled the seats. Right. And we were amazed. Um, but every everyone ate it. Everyone <laughs> ate it. It was so embarrassing. Oh my gosh. Um, I ate it worse than I ever have. Ooh. Um, no, every everyone, everyone, all the comics got off early. And it was just like the everyone performed so well. It was yeah. just like the vibe of it all was like so weird. Whoa. Um, and like we could we couldn't recover it. Oh my god. I know. No, but it was it was so funny because it was like it felt like such a awful failure at the time. Like, oh, what have I done? Like, yeah. how could I do this? But I think like no, like fuck that. Like um it's cool to be able to to do something like that cuz we learned so much from it. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's still how long have you guys how long have you guys been doing that show for? We've been doing it for like I guess almost a year in in May. Nice. Yeah. And Hell we have, yeah. we have a show tonight. That's a monthly it's a monthly, yeah. Dope. Mm -hmm. Go to it. <laughs> I'll see you there. Yeah. So, uh, show aside, um, what's your writing process like? You hate writing. What's your writing? How do you how do you generate? I do your hate jokes? it. I think well, a lot of people. It's I love talking about the process mm -hmm. and like how people do it because it can be so different. Yeah. With me, um, it's so hard, specifically for stand up, to sit down and write something mm -hmm. unless I'm like free writing. Um, and like, I, I'm taking things from there. Um, but if I have a joke and I'm trying to work on the wording of it, um, I'm much more of like an oral writer on stage. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. when I'm doing it, I'll come in with an idea and be like, okay, what if you took it this direction yes. and see what happens? Yeah. Uh, and that's always worked better for me, um, for some reason. Mm -hmm. Um, which is funny. Cause like, I never want to go up on stage and not know, um, like what I'm going to say, yeah. I think like at a core, <laughs> like that's very nerve wracking, but I've been trying to do it more where it's like, no, just go up there. Like, don't worry about it mm -hmm. being, cause I think with open mics, you know, you want to perform well so you can meet people and like, they'll like your stuff and you know, you can like advance and whatnot. Um, but I think there's such a, um, a time also to like go up there and like, you know, take a risk and be yes. creative. And a lot of the time times like when i see that i'm like fuck why can't i do that yeah. like why can't i just go up there and do something like that so it's okay. cool so, so when i go up like i try to like figure out like a joke yeah and i'll spend a lot of time on a joke rather than like editing it's it's so hard for me to to write it yeah because yeah. i think my my jokes are kind of tied with my mannerisms on stage yeah you're definitely <laughs> you're def a lot of mannerisms <laughs> a lot of mannerisms um so it's it's hard for me to figure out a joke just by the writing because yes. it's not the only aspect that goes yeah. into it does I, that make sense a hundred percent because i'm like right now i'm like since i'm writing every day i'm very much like writing things out mm -hmm. but i find that what i like to do is i write out the funny parts of the joke i get the logical pieces and then it's all just like a blur between those pieces. Yeah. I'm just like, as long as I get connect point A, yes, yes, point yes, yes. B, hundred percent, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But like, I'll figure out the in between part yeah. on stage. Yeah, which is super cool. No, I, I yeah, and totally the, agree with that. And when the pressure is on, when you're like, all right, I got beginning, I got end, I got, I have a punchline, and I gotta get there. When that pressure is on, mm -hmm. sometimes it really pays off. To yes, like it does. It yeah, out in that moment. And so. that's the and that's the cool thing about it. It's exciting. Like, um. Uh, like getting up there and not knowing like what's going to come out of your mouth mm -hmm. and then sometimes you're up there and you're like oh this is how I can connect this yeah and that's super magic sometimes I get lucky and I'll write something and that's all I need to write for and I'll go on stage and it'll be it, maybe it won't be good but it'll mm. be like oh that's like something I can try out yeah um but a lot of the time it's just like how do I make this idea like work yeah or make any sense I love your joke about the city bikes. <laughs> it's Thank so you. stupid, but it's yeah. it's wonderful. <laughs> Just like when when at the last Dan Hathaway presents show that you, mm -hmm. when you were on that one, it was funny because when you go, you get the city bike and you hit a pothole, boom! boom. I don't know. It's so <laughs> it's one of those things where I laughed so hard and Lee was like <laughs> dying laughing in the back. I'm like, this is the silliest shit ever. Like, how do you even write this? That's so <laughs> funny. I think it was that I I've never done that since. That oh, was really? the, like, that was a one off thing. It was um, great. But I think like my, my favorite part about performing jokes that like 
you know, we have a rotation of jokes that like yeah. we know like have like what like an eight seventy to like ninety percent success rate. Like yeah. you know, when we do them, we have that ammunition and doing those jokes because I've been doing a lot of them for a while. Mm-hmm. I know them so well that it's like. I can take a minute to pause and be like, oh, can I just add something here? Because yeah, yeah. I know it's going to come out of my mouth. It's not yeah. something that I'm like stressed and new about. Um, but I, I love I love when things are so silly and stupid. People, yeah. people he, like who do stand up are so, so smart. Like you see like the coolest joke writing structure. Like, mm-hmm. um, like Sabrina Wu or mm-hmm. someone who just like, can like flow in and out of anything and like have something so structured but like so surprising at the same time yeah um and like some comics are seen uh like one two punch and like that's really cool too um and like i but i think what catches me off guard the most and like what makes me laugh is like just being silly yeah and like (laughs) like and like sabrina was also silly like in the sense like when she's writing when they're writing their their stuff like Mm -hmm. they have that structure but there's also room to be like, yeah. there's also room to be funny too, you know? I guess it makes sense. Like, uh, let's talk mannerisms. Have yeah. you, like your, your thing is the start telling the joke, pause, make a face. Like I noticed you do that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's very well timed. Is that something you've always done in stand up? Is that, or is that something you kind of developed over time? There's a, there's a comic called Eli Leonard okay. who's in LA mm-hmm. and he's this like clown stand up guy. And he has this energy on stage because he has jokes and they kill. But he also will just get up there and just wing it and mm-hmm. just be up there and like feel the energy off the room. And I love studying that because it can just widen your awareness when you're there. Mm-hmm. Like every show is different. Like every space is different. And I think the more I take a pause and just like sit in something and like sit with the audience for a minute. I get mm. a better understanding of like what their like flow is mm. and how I can um like be patient with like I love um it's so it's so scary to me and it's so hard but I love taking a pause and and just making a face or something yeah and taking a time that's a, silence is so scary but it's so powerful if you use it yeah okay interesting I like that you described it as scary because it seems like something you do very naturally oh like. it's very sweet no it's it's when I'm doing it it's like in my head, it's like there's a timer and it's like it starts yes. and then a few seconds go by and it's like, OK, get back, get back, get back. Get back. Yeah. We were literally talking about this right before you walked in the door upstairs. Yeah. It's like when I, I talked, I had Tina Sieben on the podcast and she mentioned that Killa. silence was one of the things that she is like just kind of good at and yeah. has been. Mm-hmm. And I've been trying to implement it. And it is so scary. It's so it's so hard. It's, it is so scary. And what I noticed, especially for me, right, is like I have three podcasts like i'm podcasting a lot i kill dead air in podcasts like just like it like systematically yeah like i don't want the listeners to have like four seconds where we're both kind of just like lost in thought Mm -hmm. like yeah but for stand-up it's the opposite where i need to stop killing dead air and just let the dead air just like ride out and add a little bit of like visual something or just like dramatic pause you know no for sure it's tough. <laughs> it is tough. It is tough. But I think it's 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 so helpful to sit in it. And I, that's why I think bombing is so no one wants to bomb. But I think it's so helpful in yeah. the sense that you can like experience that. Mm-hmm. I bombed that a 10 p.m. tiny cupboard uh, last week. Nice. I did. I did two jokes. They went really, really well. One of them was the city bike one. Nice. And then uh, <laughs> I tanked it. I absolutely tanked it. Mm-hmm. Um. But I felt good about it because I, I performed really well. I still performed and I didn't get shaken by it. Yeah. Which isn't something that happens to me a mm. lot. I usually get shaken by a good bomb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that time I was like, oh, okay, like it's just silence. It was a room of four people also. Right. But it was just like, it's just <laughs> silence. Like it's not going to kill you. Figure mm. out how to use it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like that. That's good. Yeah. Those tiny covered 10 p.m. shows. Can't beat them. Very hit or miss. Yeah. Sometimes like amazing. Sometimes like, oof. No, no, for sure. And it's like, it's so night and day. Yeah. Which, which ones? Okay, cool. Um, What was the other thing I was going to ask you? I'm sorry. Don't be <laughs> sorry. Space. Uh, what was, what, what's something that you wish you could go back and tell yourself, younger you, about mm-hmm. stand up? What's some advice you would give to you starting out? Um. 
uh, it's okay to be bad. Mm. It's okay to be bad and like work it out. Yeah. Um, and cut it with the ego. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like just get over it and keep going mm-hmm. and, um, and just meet people and like, you know, don't be afraid to go up to someone and, and compliment them on a set or like a joke yeah. that you liked or, or talk to them about it. Like yeah. you're not, um, you're a human too. Like you can, you can also do that. Mm-hmm. Don't be scared. Yeah. You, you can do it. That's good. Yeah. I, I like that. I like the, um, the, the comedy cheat code for making friends. Mm-hmm. I, like, I don't have to do this anymore, but when I first started in New York, it was just like, you see someone set you like the joke, you just go after and say, I like this joke. Yeah. Like, and then you guys are talking. Right. Boom. No, that's easy. the thing. It's so easy. And I think comics are so socially awkward or can be so socially awkward yeah. sometimes. So meeting is <laughs> meeting is so tough. But when you're in that space, it just gets easier and easier yes. to, to handle. Like yeah. the more I went, um, for sure. And also I do, I feel, I think it's also nice to like, I'm going to say adopt newer comics to, to scenes yeah, like yeah, yeah. when people visit or they're brand new and like you can tell that they like are serious, yeah. but they're not really sure what's going on. I like to just tell those people like, OK, here's the mics you should go to. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. this is what's happening. You'll have fun here and here and here. You were going to go to this place. You're not going to have a good time there. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, for sure. And I think moving here, like when I did in March, I, I knew a few people, but I wasn't like good friends with anyone. Mm-hmm. So it was just going to a bunch of mics that. I didn't enjoy or, or no, because I just didn't know like which so were the right ones an to old go man to. Yeah, 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 like grizzly pear, like grizzly eating pear, me alive. Yeah. And I, I just, I just didn't have the knowledge. But once like I started to meet people, they'd be like, "Oh, this is a mic I really like. Yeah. Oh, like this is they run this mic. They run a few mics here actually. Like here's where you can go after that. You mm-hmm. just yeah, it expands it. It's such a, it's such a find your tribe type of thing. Yes. and like especially Brooklyn, like Brooklyn comedy is like a full-blown cult i feel like it's just like (laughs) everybody knows everybody there's like 150 people and you all gotta show face at these spots at least once a month every 48 hours (laughs) every 48 hours yeah i see the same people every 48 hours all the time yeah i used to say like when people would like leave our house like hanging out like okay well i guess i'll see you in like two hours a day something no i see them most um, i see you people like you like Mm -hmm. more so than i see best friends just because, yeah. like, they're either just <laughs> they're not comics. <laughs> they're, not, they're not comics. They're just always around, you know. Um, I had a we had a backyard party earlier this year, and our our neighbor who we're friends with, he came down, and he was like hanging out, and he was talking. He brought a friend. They were talking, you know, and they, he goes, "So, how many people here are comics?" And it's like sixty people or something. And yeah. I was like, "All of them." I was like. Yeah. There are you two, and I think two more people out there are not comics, yeah. and the rest of our community is like. What? Oh my god, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. it's a horde. It's a horde. And then I don't know. It's it's also crazy to think about just how many people do this, which is but this is also perceived as a thing that's like mystical and yes. unobtainable to yeah. so many, but uh-huh. there's also too many people doing Yeah, no, of course, of course. <laughs> I was like, how does this work out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, when I started comedy, I was like, man, I'm like, this is gonna be a special, unique thing. Like, I'm gonna pursue comedy. Yeah. And then doing it later, I'm like, man, there are people who so many people doing this. Like, yeah. How did we all have the same idea? <laughs> no, for sure. How? What? Like, I just did that joke. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like when other people shouldn't be allowed to do this. It should be me. No, I should is, just have a nice, thing. clear. Sorry. Path. It should be yeah. me and a bunch of old guys who need to be replaced. That's yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Sorry. So what are your plans to get on SNL? How are you going to tackle that one? <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think like I have the same like drive to be on it that I did. Mm. Now I'm just like a, a, a fan for so, sure so have your taste changed are you are you like more in just stand-up stand-up or do you still want to do sketch and other things or like yeah no i i i love doing other things that aren't stand-up stand-up mm-hmm. is like my main girl okay. for sure um what's your number two hmm, um well it's like it's like stand-up and then the number two is like um like I don't do the number two as much as all, but it's probably improv. Okay, yeah. I, I do it like <laughs> once a week for an hour with a few friends. Okay, that's pretty good yeah. though. It's yeah, yeah. way more than I do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's like it gets the consistency of it like gets easier every time. I'm less nervous every time. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's good to like push yourself in something that you're like very not comfortable with. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure, hundred nice. percent. Cool. Uh, final question. Yes. Before we get out of here, it's been great having you on. I've loved it. Very cool getting to know you. 
What do you love about comedy? Um, there's a certain I, I've been thinking about it a lot because I've been just really enjoying my life here. And I think comedy is something that everyone experiences, right? Like it's like all around the world, but everyone has a different relationship to it. Mm -hmm. And the way that I use it as a tool to like cope with living mm. is so important to me. Like being mm -hmm. able to like, you know, um, you know, go to a mic after a breakup or, or something, which uh, horrible, but <laughs> <laughs> it happens all the time. I'll do it over and over again. Who doesn't love when a comic gets on stage and goes, I just got done. Yeah, and no, everyone literally. goes nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, it's like, there's like such a community aspect of comedy that I love mm -hmm. and something that's so potent here in this, in yeah. New York. Um, and so grateful for it. So I, that's what I love about it. The fact that you can like just have a community in it and yeah. no matter how you got to it or what your taste is or mm -hmm. um, what you want to do with it. It's just like this, like, I don't know. It's like this intangible community space. Yeah. It's, it, it's really coolest. The, the community is like, I always think about what else has this, what else, what other thing can you right. get a community that's like this, where you have people consistently meeting up yeah. with each other at different spots to do this thing. It's like, yeah. I literally cannot think of another thing that would be as enjoyable as the comedy. Community. No, it's it's so it's so much fun just to be because um, like I think a lot of people will think about like, oh, like, you know, how do I get better? Like, how am I not here yet? Like, what do I yeah. have to do? But I think if you zoom like if you zoom in more mm -hmm. and not zoom out so much, it's like, no, day to day. This is awesome. Yeah, it's, it's like, the best. You're doing it for real. You're doing like, it. Yeah, you're doing it every day. So that being said, listeners, if you're listening to this and you have not started stand up comedy, you're thinking about doing uh don't okay unless <laughs> unless you're gonna book me leave all it. right leave okay i don't want to make new friends <laughs> but yeah i think uh also in new york we get a lot of us many people get insecure about their place and like the food chain in a way yeah. you know like oh how like do i have something worth it am i good blah, 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 all this shit you really think about it it's like dude you're doing comedy every day in some way yeah in the the number one place to do comedy like you are doing it you are real. literally doing it yeah. for real and that's the dream and that, i think that's like always like good to remind like mm -hmm. myself for sure like yeah. no i get to do it every day like i'm living a dream yeah for sure and uh with the community aspect it's like when you have friends and you have people who respect you and think you're funny yeah. and you respect them and think they're funny it's like we're all good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's 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 beautiful. Absolutely. It's awesome. All right, Molly. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank this you so much for having me on. So fun. Where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram. Unfortunately, at Molly M O L L Y underscore Z A L M A N. Guys, go follow Molly on Instagram. <laughs> go to her comedy show. Go go be like, why is the vibe bad in here? Just kidding. <laughs> follow her Instagram. Come come hang uh yeah that's it for this week thank you guys so much for watching and listening and i'll talk to you all soon bye